Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas and at an altitude of 2,792 meters above sea level. Once one takes a good look at this place, it becomes near impossible to believe that the Incan civilization, with their access to such limited technologies, could have created such a place. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti. According to academia, when he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? How did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollantaytambo, including the surrounding region. All were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants? Or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray? Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, using this to slowly acclimatize plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high. Regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide, created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase. And although not as complex, 
still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. Sacsayhuaman, meaning Royal Eagle, is a fortress temple complex which lies at the northern edge of the once great Incan capital of Peru, still known today as Cusco. Apparently constructed during the reign of Pacacuti between 1438 and 1471 AD, According to academia, its massive, well-built walls remain a testimony not only to Incan power, but also to their skills of architecture and their approach of blending their monumental structures harmoniously with the natural landscape. The Sacsayhuaman site was so well-built, in fact, it is still used today for reenactments of Inca-inspired ceremonies. With some of the biggest blocks to be found within ancient ruins anywhere on Earth, it's important to remember just how these ancient civilizations managed to move these stones, having never actually thought to record such techniques within engravings or writings of any kind, remains a mystery. Blocks many tons in weight placed together with such precision, no mortar was ever used, yet the site remains intact, like a giant's dry stone wall. Enormous random-shaped stones were apparently effortlessly stacked neatly together, or one on top of another, forming the amazing walls we see today. Who built Sacsayhuaman? Was it really the Incas? If so, how did they manage it? Like all other ancient sites upon Earth, archaeological finds are one of the main driving factors behind dating such relics. These investigations will often look for specific artifact types. These objects, known to have places within studied history, are often used to establish a date given. This by no way means that the date is accurate, or indeed the artifacts from a far different type of culture from a very different time in history are not missed, or more often than not, ignored. The giant blocks interlocked and sloped to maximize their resistance to earthquake damage, a construction feature somehow understood over 500 years ago. Time has proved its efficiency. Earthquakes have done remarkably little damage to the structures in Peru over the years many still in their apparently abandoned state, and the Sacsayhuaman is no exception. Did the Incas really build Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, etc.? Or, like we have postulated regarding the Great Sphinx and the Giza Plateau, was the Incan Empire a mere re-inhabitation of an extraordinarily well-built ancient ruin, left by a far more advanced, yet far more ancient civilization? Perhaps one day, Peru will reveal its ancient secrets.